In this video I'm going to look at Affinity Photo's procedural texture tool and I'm going to go over the difference between scalars and vectors and why you might want to use them and I'm going to create um, something that might look something like this picture here. So I've created a new a pixel layer and it's black and it's uh, selected. So I'm going to go into filters and choose color and procedural texture. And so I'm going to just start with the blank one. I'm going to add a equation and then I'm going to um, the equation I'm going to use is uh, the Perlin cubic. I'm, I've been using Notepad++ and uh, for quite a while and it works pretty well for this application. Um, I'm just going to copy some stuff from over here. But one good thing about Notepad++ is it tells you if you've got the right number of parentheses. So if you have sort of a complicated equation up here, you can get lost in all those parentheses. So that's another advantage of this. I'm just going to bring in this formula. And uh, for now, I'm going to start off with uh, sort of a basic thing. Um, so this is Perlin noise. It generates sort of a cloudy noise-like pattern. Um, and actually Perlin won an Academy Award for inventing this method. Um, but it's, this one's using, uh, I think it's a cubic interpolation, and I looked at a bunch of them, and I like this one pretty well. So um, there it is, and so I haven't changed the parameters yet, and it doesn't look like too much down here. I'm going to select the all three channels, so it'll make it sort of gray. And now, in order to see this better, I'm going to scale it. And one of the things you can do is, uh, if you divide by the width, um, this is the relative x-coordinate, the relative y-coordinate in, uh, in the image. Oops. And if you divide by the width of the document, it'll give a good uh, sort of scaling factor. Okay, now we can sort of see the, the cloudy noise um, shape coming in. It's sort of, uh, the picture, the pattern is sort of big. So I'm going to add a scaling factor. I'm going to use a real number. I'll just cut, leave it at A. And so I'll multiply each of these by A. to, And then that'll uh, enable me to scale it to smaller size. So as A gets bigger, I guess you can think of it as having more cells in it. That's what they usually say. So um, now if you made a mistake, it will uh, disappear like that. So let's see. Oh, I have zero for A. So there's one, two, three, four. So as I bring up uh, more values of A, I'm just going to move that a little bit. Um, you can see that I'm seeing it's like I'm zooming out with this. Okay, so I'm seeing more of the of the overall pattern. Okay, so that's the basic um, format. I also have these other two variables. So let's look at those. If I change this one to one or two, okay, as I bring this up to higher values. I can see it looks like it's adding more detail. And that's exactly what it's doing. It's adding more, it's generating noise, first at a, a low level, which is very smooth noise, and then it's adding a noise at a higher frequency and keeping going on top of that. And this only goes up to about six before it stops doing that. So usually I like it all the way up to six. And so I'm just gonna leave that one at six. Um, and I may add a slider for that, but that one seems to work pretty well at six. This one is sort of like a contrast, and it goes between um, zero and one, so I think I'll add a, a slider for that one, and um, I'll just leave that at B for now. And call that B. And so as I bring this down, 
gets sort of more gray. It's sort of, um, it's like a low pass filter, like a Gaussian filter filters it out and just set a nice value right there. Okay, so that's the basic uh, Perlin noise function. Now, I want to look at uh, the, the R, X, and R, Y, and really everything in here is a scalar value. But if you look at Perlin noise, it says it can take either a scalar or a vector here. So let's look at how that would work. So I'm going to add a variable and I'm going to call it V and I'm going to make that uh, vector 2 and put in our X and our Y into it like that. Um, and then I'm going to replace all this with vector V but I need to do my scaling so I'm going to divide this by W and I will uh, multiply by A over here. Let's see if that did anything. So, um, yeah, so now it still works and it works basically the same way. So um, a vector or a scalar only has one number in it. A vector has more than one number. In this case, it's vector two, so that means it has two different numbers. Now, in a way, Rx refers to all of the pixels in the drawing, and you know, Rx and Ry are the coordinates of all the pixels in the drawing, so that sort of is referring to a lot of numbers. I mean, move this around by dragging it like that. But that sort of takes those two values and puts it into one vector. So um, a vector two, uh, something with um, two Cartesian coordinates, that would be a good application for a two vector. One of the things I'd like to do is I'd like to color this from any of the, of the black areas. I'd like to make those um, uh, just leave them black, but the light areas, I'd like to have them be a particular color. Now I could do that by just turning off, you know, two of these. Uh, or a certain number of these and then I'd get a particular color. So this goes from black to red or I could go from black to green or black to blue. But what I like to do is to fade from um, black to a color that I enter in. So I'm going to use another vector for colors and since my color has red, green, and blue components to it I'll use a three vector for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. I'm gonna have another variable. It's gonna be, I'll call it VC1. And I'm gonna, it's gonna be a vector three. And I'm gonna have it R1, G1, and B1 will be, and then a semicolon at the end of that. Um, and so those are going to be my three uh, components for that vector. And now, in order to translate that to color, I multiply my Perlin cube by that. So all I got to do is um, VC1 times Perlin cubic, and it will uh, t fade from black up to this color. Okay, so right now, don't have any values in, so I'm going to add three zero to one ranges and call this one R1, this one will be G1, and this one will be B1. Okay, so now they're all the same, but if I change these, now I can uh, adjust the color to any color I want for that, and also change my other parameters. like that. Okay, so when I've used this before in other software, I really wanted to have it fade between different colors and in that software you could choose, you know, four or five different colors and it could gradually fade between all of those. Um, and I haven't figured out a good way to do that, but I was able to figure out how to get it to fade between two different colors. So let's look at that. So I'm going to enter another color as a vector. 
So I'll just copy this with a control C, paste it in with a control V, change this to two, and each of these to two, two, and two. Okay. Um, now I've got to put in my three, uh, three new colors, and this is going to be R2, G2, and B2. Okay, um, and so the way to get this to fade, to crossfade between the two colors, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to add that. Now if I just had a VC2 here, it would go to the second color. But um, what I want this one to do is when it's black, I want that color to be at its maximum. When it's white, I want it to be at its minimum. So this function will go from zero to one. So I want it to go to one to zero. So what I'm going to do is take one minus the Perlin noise function, and that'll enable me to cross fade between uh, the two colors. So right now that's set to white, and now I can bring that down and adjust the color and have this cross fade between two different colors. Now when I do this, uh, um, yeah, I'll let it go. Yeah, so I can only go between two different colors, but they can be any color, um, which to me is a lot uh, nicer to use than just having to rely on you know, the red, green, or black, or blue channels uh, selected fully. All right. Um, yeah, so again, if you look at this uh, scalar value just as a single number, like the number of pixels and the width of the image, a vector then can be made um, from two values. Uh, uh, for a vector two, that usually works with, well with x and y coordinates. And then uh, three vector has three numbers in it. Um, and that works well for colors. And so when you get over into your function, you can have those, um, put those in as, uh, as vectors. All right, uh, let me know if you have any comments or questions. Thank you for watching.